两千年换。for the opportunity to bring in um, the new year with you. And so, um, like Nikki said, my name is Jinya, Jinya Huang. Sounds like Virginia, just without the verb. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, uh, thank you, Megan and Nikki, for inviting me to come in here to talk about sanctuary, what this word means to me. And so with the, when they first asked me, I just, you know, I thought, okay, English is my second language. I'm going to Google this puppy <laughs> and find out, you know, what it means. And so, first and foremost, it's a place of refuge or safety. Secondly, uh, it means a nature reserve. And third, according to, you know, dictionary.com, it's a holy place, a temple, or a church. And so I find this interesting, and you know, as I interpret this, I thought about it um, from my perspective um, in my early days. Um, I grew up actually in Taipei, Taiwan. Um, I immigrated to, um, to America when I was 13. And um, Taipei, Taiwan to Tulsa, Oklahoma, y'all. It's a little bit of a culture shock. And so, um, you know, my, I grew up with five sisters, and my parents, you know, really wanted to take us out of the south of Taiwan um, to have access to education. And having six girls, you know, I, I grew up with this very uh, old Asian uh, concept, and, and it's really a concept that is still well regarded for worldwide. I don't know why that people don't invest in girls. People don't invest in women. And um, my parents didn't believe in that. They wanted to invest in us, and they wanted us to have access to education. And so um, when my dad actually lost his job to uh, um, at a, as a mechanical engineer at a cement factory, and my, my aunt and uncle said, you know, we're starting a Chinese version of McDonald's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Do you, do you guys want to come and help? And my parents said, of course, yes. So my oldest sister um, was already married. The second sister was already engaged, and so they brought the four younger ones here. And my uh, maternal grandparents, sorry, it's like really hot up here. <laughs> I'm like, am I under like interrogation life? <laughs> I did it! Okay. No. So, um, uh, you know, I, I thought, okay, yeah, I'm going to come to America. I didn't really want this, but, you know, my grandparents, parents were farmers and I was so close to nature it was fun you know growing up on a farm and all that and and then I went to the city in Taipei and then you know and then to come to Tulsa was a huge shock but I was like wow you know free school free school bus it was super interesting and um but you know my sanctuary um was always coming home to make art I knew ever since I was three years old that I wanted to do something creative and I just remember like going to school and going to art lessons. That was the only place that you can draw on the ground. <laughs> and nobody said that it wasn't okay. And, um, and contrary to popular opinion, I did not excel in math or science. And so I really, <laughs> really needed something that I could hone in on. And so art became my universal language. And, um, and you know, coming to appreciate things like this, you know, just, um, this is one of my favorite places on earth in West Texas. It's um, Terlingua, Texas, and, and this is where I would want to like just like it, any place I would like to be. This is this is a, a huge sanctuary for me. And um, and yes, I remember to credit the photographer. Thank you very much. Yeah, we always want to do that, right? Really honor our our, our friends and um, neighbors who do this incredible work. And so you know that kind of goes into the uh, the. I suppose, you know, the, um, the nature preserve, you know, kind of uh, definition of our sanctuary. And, um, you know, but growing up it was just kind of like, okay, there are these outside things that I kind of, you know, always look to, and one of those pillars, obviously, is my constant, is my mother. And um, my mom, Margaret Mayne Huang, uh, was very much uh, a 
a chef and, and a community leader. And so, um, you know, growing up, it was her that said, you know, just because I didn't get to finish elementary school, that doesn't mean you don't get access to that. Just because I didn't, I had to get married and, and arrange marriage, that doesn't mean you can't fall in love and choose your own path. And, and just because I don't know how to speak all these languages, you know, that doesn't mean you can't be whoever you want to be. And just having that, I mean, it's incredible, you know. And she wasn't like your typical mother that was like, get married, <laughs> marry well, and go find a good job. And you know, and like it took me years to actually figure out, like, oh, I can actually tell my mom that I'm going to I'm going to change my major from international business to arts and humanities and not get disowned. <laughs> she was like, why didn't you tell me this earlier? Why did you waste? your money, like she made us pay for our own college, we worked at the <laughs> restaurant, and so, you know, that was the thing, that was the deal, was, you know, you come and work at the restaurant, and so I started working at the restaurant uh, um, that my aunt and uncle started, uh, and for those of you who've been around Dallas long enough, it was Egg Roll Express, and so they kind of oh. had a, went up, had a, had to, obviously, with Panda and Lost, but 16 franchises, you know, they did well enough, you know, that, um, you know, in the Southwest, that it was really awesome to kind of see, like, you know, the, that, that kind of, you know, entrepreneurship, empowerment, and yes, and my parents uh, and my aunt and uncle were not beneath child labor, so, so that one right there. <laughs> 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 no, 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 you stay. Put her to work. <laughs> we're going to work the room just around her. Yeah, no, it, it, it was like, you're peeling snow peas, you are. You're taking out the trash. You're going to go to clean the toilet because we ain't got time for that. You know, like, you were helping out. It was a family business. It was a family affair. It was an intergenerational. My grandparents were there. My parents were there. We were there. You know, all the generations, you know, just under one roof helping out, you know. And so I was too young and stupid to realize this, but my, uh, my mom, you know, really just saw the opportunity for us, you know, not only in Tulsa, but they were like, oh, you know, there's a franchise that was doing really well in, in Dallas. And they said, oh, we're going to buy one of the franchises in Dallas, and that way you guys can go to a, you know, a bigger uh, a university and, you know, have, go to, you know, be in a bigger metropolitan city and just, you know, fulfill your bigger hopes and dreams, right? And so, um, you know, in that, uh, so the location they had was that over at Farmer's Branch, and so in the kitchen, my mom, would train other Aww. refugees, immigrants, and migrants to come and work in our kitchen. She would train them with job skills and send them on to bigger and better opportunities. You know, so for those of you who understand the, the, the very complicated uh, past of Taiwan, uh, it is a runaway province uh, from, from, according to China. <laughs> China. They've always wanted to claim a badge, just like Hong Kong, you know, as a colony. And um, we were actually colonized by the uh, uh, really Japanese and Chinese, you know, uh, over the years. And so my father actually grew up during the war, and um, he was forced to, to learn how to speak ja Japanese and not speak Taiwanese or Hokkien or Mandarin. And um, and my parents remember the days where they had to ration food, you know, rice, soy sauce and then giving the military and government their food, and then the farmers ended up having to starve themselves and, and experiencing you know, food insecurity. So it's really challenging, like, all these things that, you know, my parents, we, my ancestors were refugees, you know, who escaped from these, you know, colonization, uh, from war, and uh, famine, and trauma, and, you know, to take refuge in, in Taiwan. And, you know, but, but most people, you know, like, what's happening in Ukraine right now, uh, our conversations with Presidents, you know, Bush and Clinton, had, they told us that, like, that is actually buying Taiwan maybe just another year or two of freedom. And it's challenging, you know, those the interconnectedness, you know, like, for, for my parents to share their oral history, right, and, and the, the idea of, you know, what was sanctuary for them you know, really to be able to get to a safe place and not have to be ruled under communism, not be ruled under, you know, um, all the uh, socioeconomic issues and political issues and challenges. That was really huge for them. And, you know, coming to America was also like hitting the lottery for them. You know, finally we were able to afford education and all that. And so, 
you know, the mindfulness of my mom wanting to do this for other people because she didn't have access, it, it didn't just go to her children, us. It was actually to all these other people that came across us. So she thought, oh, if I didn't know how to speak English and I didn't have any ready set job skills, how many other people are experiencing this, you know? And so she provided that refuge and that 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 sanctuary, you know, for um, people who were interested in cooking to, you know, to come and, and help us out. So um, when I lost her to cancer, um, she passed away actually in 2015 from multiple myeloma. I was devastated. I mean, just falling apart. And like any other thing that I go through, I immediately thought about what it would be like to make art around the things that both my mom and I cared about. My mom cared about food, about feeding people. I cared about making art, making a difference. And so, um, you know, uh, this was really uh, shortly after I was kind of getting like the triple whammy, if not the double whammy at, around that time. Uh, I had just become a domestic violence survivor, <coughs> and so I was working with um, uh, refugee resettlement agencies, you know, to find other uh, their clients who were going through DV situations, you know, refugees, immigrants, migrants, and also uh, people who were seeking a, a domestic violence shelter. And um, and so I was already making art to um, to really you know, tell their stories of survival because I felt really alone at the time and I wanted other people to, to know that they're not alone. And so I thought, well, you know, I, I wanted to honor my mom. I wonder who else, you know, would be interested in doing this with me. And here's the community, and now you're a part of it. <laughs> you know, I, I really just um, reached out to people and started saying, hey, I have this idea. I want to... Um, I want to cook with women. I want to cook with women from war-torn countries. I want to cook with refugee women from war-torn countries and develop a workforce training program um, where they can learn about, you know, getting a food handler's permit, food manager's license, and you know, um, the logistics and operations of, you know, how to work in an American food service business because. They already know how to cook. That's not the problem. <laughs> you know, these women from you know from Iraq, from Syria, from Afghanistan, from Myanmar, from the Congo, from Rwanda, from Burundi, and I can go on and on. All these women are kick-ass chefs. They don't need to go to culinary school. They are fully certified in my mind because my taste buds know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> decades of being at my parents' restaurant, like we knew what crowd pleasers were. You know, we knew what worked and what sold, and you know, but and and what really sold is when any time you cook with love, any time you cook with love, you taste it in every bite. You know, and so, yeah, I, I just I we put out the APB, you know, with these re refugee resettlement agencies like uh, uh, IRC International Rescue Committee, Mosaic Family Services, um, uh, you know, Catholic Charities, and uh, Refugee Services of Texas, and we just said, you know, hey, we're interested in cooking with people and they're like are you crazy um, you know because there's no translators that we can provide you there's no infrastructure we can barely keep up with resettling refugees you know people who are trying to you know find sanctuary here in America we don't have time to you know um, work on an art project with you because initially I pitched this as an art project I wanted a community space for people to be able to talk about you know um, what safety means, what freedom means, and um, and I wanted them to be able to share their 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 storytelling of food and culture and their heritage with everyone, and not have to sacrifice, you know, the Western idea of what good food is. And um, and so they cook their ethnic food and they share their storytelling, sometimes in their native tongue, and we have translators or interpreters that come and help with the storytelling. And then we, you know, we share it with the public. And so the first pop-up was actually a collaboration with Cafe Momentum. Have you guys been out there before? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the to Chef Chad Chef Chad Hauser. They're actually franchising. Did you guys know that? Yeah, they're actually uh, getting out to uh, Pittsburgh, and then uh, I think later on. Uh, uh, Atlanta and Nashville, and so what they do is they help uh, uh, 
youth coming out of juvenile detention halls, but they uh, do an internship and um, they teach them how to cook and they go on to bigger and better opportunities. And so when we started Break 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 Borders, we're like, it's like Cafe Momentum, but for refugee women. <laughs> it's like, are we doing a movie review? Like, you know, like, how, what do I have to do to get you people to understand it? <laughs> so it's like, I'm not speaking Chinese. It's not English. Totally English here. And so running a social enterprise, that's super interesting too, right? It's not really prevalent here around the South, you know? And so, you know, we actually kickstarted as an LLC. And um, and so, how am I doing on time? You, you can start like just like nudging at me. Like, do I need to like s like fast forward? 15, 20 minutes. Okay, cool. All right. So um, yeah. So this is my six-word story: social practice artist turned accidental entrepreneur. Have you guys heard that? Like supposedly uh, Hemingway kind of said this. You tell me. What 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 did he say? Uh, oh, do you know the six word? Like, do you know the yeah. his six word story? Oh yeah. <coughs> okay, uh, like, bring it. Baby shoes for sale, never worn. Yeah. Perfect. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Baby shoes. <laughs> Baby shoes for sale. For never sale, worn. never worn. Yeah. yeah. It makes you want to know more, right? So. I hope that makes you want to know more. Here we go. <laughs> so we make food for good. And so, um, you know, after the, the pop-up, like, you know, Chad was like, let's just, like, why are you still talking about this? I was like, well, I pitched this idea for two, two years and nobody wants to take it on. It took our previous administration to obliterate immigration and tell refugees there's a travel ban and you, you cannot come to our country. It took, you know, um, lots of people saying no to me for the longest time. And, um, you know, and f so finally Chad was like, um, okay, we're not going to say no anymore. We're going to say yes, and we're going to pilot early. We're going to fail early, and we're going to just, like, try things out. And I said, okay. Um, <laughs> we invited closest, 80 of our closest friends. It was much like this. We just, you know, pop tables up. The interns came, and the ladies cooked. And, you know, um, people were like, hey, you know, um, how can we get... This was delicious. We so enjoyed the storytelling. We have never been to a catering event, never been to a, a, a food event where we got to hear, you know, the, the, the cooks actually come out, the chefs actually come out to engage with you, to tell you about the origin of the food, the history of their lives, what their personal lived-in experiences were, what it's like to, you know, to live as refugees abroad, what it's like to come to America, and what their experience was cooking with Great 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 Waters. They were like, how can we get this to our home? How can we get this to our work? How can we get this to a workshop, or to a conference? And, you know, so people just, you know, started calling and catering was the best way, you know, the ladies who have, you know, lives, you know, they're married with kids and, you know, and needed a, 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 a way of making dignified way of living and, and they, you know, once they finish the two-year program, they actually, you know, they work while they train as catering and they just, you know, they'll, they'll start out with their own entrepreneurship or they will actually, you know, they'll, they'll cook for their mosque, you know, during Ramadan or they will, act, they've actually been placed at restaurants and uh, have you guys been to Hello Dumpling lately? Mm -hmm. uh, some of those, some of those uh, uh, um, cooks are actually uh, Burmese refugee uh, uh, cook, uh, cooks from Myanmar who were escaping uh, from uh, Myanmar uh, due to religious persecution. And so we were joking with June. She was like, I can't find anybody to pinch uh, dumplings in the 214 area code. So that would really work out. <laughs> and, um, and so first we started out as a catering company, and then we uh, tried out the packaged goods. And now we're on to uh, some handmade cookies. And so, um, you know, it's all an experiment, right? It's all a social experiment of like, who wants to invest in, you know, um, uh, social capital, which is people. And the thing is, you know, the ladies are so in love with sharing their food and culture with people that when they talk about brick, brick, brick borders, it's like, you know, um, that's a limerick, by the way, if you say that 10 times really fast. Like, yeah, I will give you a box of cookies. Um, I brought cookies actually to bribe people. So the people who have like, actually you know, participated, you're going to get a, a little bit of sweets. So, um, yeah, they really, you know, uh, they tell people like, hey, I'm cooking with this crazy lady. No, they don't say crazy lady. <laughs> just like, I'm cooking with this company, and, um, and we um, serve food, and we tell stories. And it's really just like, it's like hang out, you know, with your family and sisters all the time and like 
It's really fun. It doesn't feel like a game. Do you want to come and cook with me? That's how we recruit, is by word of mouth. And that's actually how people find out about us, is by word of mouth. We don't do a huge amount of advertising. It's like, honestly, you know, like when you trust people and you're like, hey, I really believe in this cause. I really believe in this purpose. I really believe in this why. It's so easy to like bring people in, right? And like when they have created that place of refuge and, and an idea of like, this is where I can go, you know, for, for freedom, for safety, a, a, a place that's, you know, not only safe, but also courageous for me to like share like who I am 100%, you know, like, it's amazing, right? And so we, 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 we've really enjoyed, you know, creating that with people. And so this is one of our amazing cooks. Um, she's actually really actually now our food manager. This is Nawara. And that name actually in Arabic means flower. And uh, she's really blossomed, you know, like when she actually taught French uh, back in Syria. And um, coming to America, like, she was like speaking English fluently by six months, but she kept saying, oh, I'm so sorry, I don't speak English very well. And I'm like, you have learned like six different languages, like threat, you know, because they, 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 they uh, like escaped, she was like pregnant and uh, like she had to, you know, walk her children with like no water, no food in the desert for 10 days to get to, you know, to Turkey and like, you know, and so many of the, um, refugees will go through all these different countries and then she's like they pick up these languages along the way so by the time they get here English is not a second language it's like fourth fifth or sixth you know language that they've picked up and what's amazing is not only is she a, she's a great cook but she's actually an amazing baker and if you guys know the difference it's like baking is a little more of a science you know, it's a little more precise and what's awesome with her is like one of her superpowers is finance <laughs> that girl works with our CPA <laughs> you know to get payroll done like I don't make me do it like please please God you know and so like she has really come into her own and you know people ask her like you know how do you know how to speak English very well it's so well and she's like oh I learned so I work at break 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 borders Jinya makes us do all kinds of stuff sometimes I don't even know where I'm going I could be serving at the Bush Institute you know, hanging out with presidents, or I could be like, you know, at the public library, you know, um, serving people who are experiencing homelessness. I, I could be anywhere at, at, at any time and just being able to, you know, have that exposure that they're not living in their bubble and that, that cross pollination has been incredible. And, you know, and it's learning stuff like this, you know, we go through cultural trainings too, you know, like talking to people, getting to know people from other communities. And I won't go super into this, but you guys, um, check out this article, that'll kind of help, you know, some of these uh, creative mornings, you know, um, uh, congregations, if you will. And so, you know, like I said about the word of mouth, that kind of social impact has, you know, a multiplier effect. People sharing, you know, hey, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And, you know, and, and uh, you know, having collaborations of people, you know, who show up and say, you know what, Jinya? <laughs> Maybe you need a little help with infographics because <coughs> nobody wants to hear you talk for like hours on end, you know. And so this, you know, tells that story, right? You know, the people we're serving, their families, and UN studies show that if you invest in women, they will invest 90% of their income straight back into their families and communities, whereas that statistic for men is only about 40%. Y'all. Guys, pony <laughs> <Hold me> up! <laughs> What's going on? You know, like, and so you know when you invest in women and girls, it's a high ROI, high return on investment. So like, do it. And that's why we do this. You know, we work with women from all around the world, and I love that. You know, they do a lot of great, great, great borders on their own too. You know, this is uh, our our uh, food manager uh, Rania Ahmad on the left. In the middle is uh, um, uh, Bas uh, I'm sorry, Basmina. She was actually a part of the uh, Parolis who uh, were eva evacuated from Afghanistan last year. They abruptly had to leave their country, and you know you're hearing now, no women are supposed to, you know, go to. No women or girls are allowed to go to a university or have receive any education, and you know all those things that you know that that we do here is to fight against that. So the work goes far. We've had the pleasure of being on the Today Show. We have uh, have been able to, you know, really like uh, when I when they called about Time Magazine, I was like, "You mean Jose Andre is gonna be on the cover?" And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? What? What did I ever do to deserve this? It's not me. 
that people, you know, th th this is the community lifting us. That's how we get here, you know. And it's, in, you know, in, in any time that I experience any kind of stress, just distress, trauma, all that, it's our communities coming to our aid. And when they said, okay, you, you need help, you want to share your story, we'll, we'll come help and, and, and share your stories. We'll take pictures and Kathy, everybody, like here, everybody stepping up to do this has, has been just phenomenal. And like I said, these are just a few, a few of our community partners that offer that sanctuary for, for the women that we work with. And, you know, it, it, there's so many, I can't even like, you know, fit them on here, but it, these are just some of the, you know, incredible support that we've received, you know, throughout the years. And so this is one of my favorite civil rights activists, and this is one of my favorite quotes from her. We are the leaders we've been looking for. There's no need to wait for Superman to come and save us. You know, the work starts with us. And, you know, and I think a lot of the, the, um, the things that we talked about before, you know, the dictionary, you know, explanation or definition of, you know, what sanctuary means, right? Like, there is usually a place, a person, a gathering, somewhere that you find that, but honestly, to me, I really believe finding our sanctuary, our holy temple within ourselves. It all begins with me, you know, it begins with you. And so I really, you know, hope that you think about, you know, what that looks like and how you treat yourself, you know, when you go on your creative journey and discover, you know, what that really means for you because you can go any place in the world, but when you come back, you remember, like, you know, like, I love to travel, you know, and, like, I'll, I'll go all around the world, and when I come home, I'm, like, depressed. I'm, like, oh, no. Like, why can't I just be, like, on vacation mode <laughs> all the time, right? But then I remember, oh, I'm doing work that is purposeful, that is meaningful. I feel like I'm making, moving the needle just a little bit, making some impact. You know, when the women, you know, are on the fireside chat panel, you know, um, talking and, and sharing their stories and, and telling people that now they have power back. Now they have power back. Like, I don't coach them on what they say. They share, you know, what they want to. And, and for them to find that word meaningful is, is really incredible. So um, uh, before I break out into this, um, I may kind of want to do a little bit. So, you know, parts of this is, you know, my mom really uh, taught me a lot about just what interfaith work is like. I was raised Buddhist, and I've been working with a lot of women just from all around the world of different faith. And, um, you know, and I wanted to actually share some of these parts with you. And so after, um, actually, we'll do it after, um, uh, well, actually, how, how much time do we have now? 10? 15? 15 still? OK. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how did that work? <laughs> like time loop, that the like matrix or something. Um, well, wow. OK. Well, um, in, we can, I can walk you through it, or we can uh, do this together. We can do a little, uh, we're going to do a couple collaborative uh, activities here just to kind of talk about, you know, the renewal, the, um, the inclusion, and, you know, the, the type of work that, that my mom really taught me. And so, um, like Nikki said, um, we're actually, you know, coming up on Lunar New Year. I'm very, I'm super Chinese. I'm like super Asian. <laughs> everything about me is like I walk, talk, you know, like you're going to know like everything about Taiwan. And so I, um, so when Nikki said, oh, so also the Lunar New Year, I was like, oh, I, one of my favorite activities for like people of all ages is um, I love um, doing this red envelope bookmark. And um, so you guys know uh, Sunday is actually Year of the Rabbit coming up, right? Okay. And, uh, and if you don't know your Chinese zodiac, what animal you are, you must find out. <laughs> <laughs> this is like every other astrology. It's like, like oh, I forget Taurus. Like, oh. Like you're the dog. You can really get into some stuff there, you know. And um, so, 
So I brought uh, these red envelopes. They're pre-stuffed with a lucky penny inside for you. And um, usually there's a lot more money in that, but that's all I can afford. <laughs> all I can afford, y'all. Like, keep ordering great, great, big orders so I can afford to give you more money in your money envelope. And um, so, like, you know, you do it for, like, New Year's. You do it for special occasions when somebody has a child, when somebody gets married. You know, like, red envelope is super lucky because it comes with money. <laughs> and lots of good luck. And so I pre-stuffed them with a lucky penny inside for you. And then uh, each one of these, uh, they all have different, you know, cool saying on it. Like, yours actually says fortune fool. And uh, yours says Wan Shi Ru Yi, so like 10,000 things will always go your way. It's really like millions, but you know, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, what else uh, is yeah, Wan Shi Ru Yi? That's also the uh, everything will go your way. Fu is good fortune. Oh, Da Ji Da Li, that's like lots of good luck and lots of prosperity. Yeah, so like they're all good things. Like, <laughs> it's not like the world is gonna end, follow me. There's nothing, nothing like that. Yeah, yeah, like super positive stuff. And, um, and then I obviously, you know, I did a little branding and did a little, you know, break, break, break border stickers on the back just so you remember me. If you don't like them, you can totally kill them all. But, um, <laughs> I'm like, come on. Um, and then that's kind of like my business card. And then uh, the, uh, they're pre hole punched already. And so, um, and I think some of you got ahead of it and actually uh, I brought the little uh, uh, antique coins that kind of, uh, uh, you know, hark back to like dynasty days of like centuries ago of like what people carried as actually as money. And so there are red strings that you can actually just tie on with the red hole and then you can um, use them as a, a bookmark or, you know, or just something that you, you want to put, you know, someplace, you know, for good luck, for good feng shui, for good anything, like, yeah, have fun at it. And I have a particular way I do it, but you don't have to, you, like, if you guys just kind of want to, like, you know, tie it on your own, and, um, and, but I, the funny thing is, like, my mom was always kind of a little bit superstitious about stuff like this, you know, like, you always tied it, like, you know, either, like, in lucky numbers, right, you know, like, uh, three, you know, you can never divide it, it never ends, six, six is, like, you know, all things are going your way, Eight, eight, like rhymes, like with like prosperity. Eight, the number eight, and the number nine rhymes with like forever. I'm like, is there an unlucky number? Oh, she's like, oh yeah, the number two rhymes with like hunger. Like you never want that. And the number two, the number four rhymes with death. You never want that either. And so like when you shop for houses, you never want to do that. And so like I'm like, oh, okay, you know. So it's hilarious, but um, but you guys, you know. However you want to do this, you can uh, you can go ahead and just you know tie the little coins on, and so you can tie like three knots, eight knots, nine knots, whatever, six knots, eight knots, whatever that, that you're comfortable with. Did you get one of the coins? If you didn't get a coin, yeah, yeah, just help yourself. Yeah, cool. And um, so like uh, I typically, yeah, sure. <laughs> so I typically like just take. Um, because I like the coin to stay in the front, and so I'll, I'll, I'll actually take the, the two little string and, and I'll put it through the, the hole from the front, like this. Can you kind of see that? So your coin is actually in the front, and the string kind of is like this. Do you see that? Okay. And then I kind of basically just like take this and depends on how loose or tight you want the coins to be to the very top. I wish I had like a like a macro lens, you know, <laughs> like video thing to like help us. And then I just like tie it as as tight as I can up here. Did you kind of see that? Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then so now that it's already tied on here, you can basically just kind of start one knot, two knot, I'm going to do the nine thing, three, four, four, Leo, count with me, <laughs> Chi, that's seven. Five, eight, rhymes with prosperity, and jiu, jiu, 
One more time, I didn't hear that. Jo uh -huh. rhymes with forever. And so you will have good luck, prosperity, good fortunes, everything awesome. Forever and ever. There you go. <laughs> So, like, when you go to any Asian market, they'll, they'll have, you know, actually, like, the year, you know, of the zodiac, and so here's some of the really cute ones out there. Super colorful rabbit. And um, here's another one. Here's a more simple one, if you can see the design. Uh, more modern. And, um, yeah. What's up? I just wanted to add that it's also the year of the cat for uh, Vietnamese. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Lunar New Year for Vietnamese New Year is the year of the cat. And tell us a little more what about. Oh, I don't know anything besides. I mean, there's a lot of historical facts and stories. I'm oh, not facts. They're stories. Uh -huh. So I don't know which one is factual. That's okay. We love wars. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Legend has. So this is the, the only lore. year where the Vietnamese and the Chinese lunar doesn't match up. Oh, okay. Okay. So, but the they say that there there was confusion or possibly confusion with the word Mao and mm. Mao means cat in Vietnamese. Uh -huh. So since we're derived from the Chinese, like either it was out of defiance or out of like oh confusion. So or they just stuck with it. Well, I love that there's diversity even in the Lunar New Year, <laughs> and however we celebrate it and whatever animals we do that with, we um, yeah. We do it happily. So thank you so much. Happy Year of the Cat. And uh, let's see. So, um, uh, okay. Um, how? I'm just going to do one little song and teach somebody, uh, everybody a little something. And then we'll, um, we'll kind of uh, close out if that's okay. Okay. Cool. So one other activity that we're, this is how we inclusive we are. So um, my, uh, my cousin actually, uh, um, as it turns out, passed away last year. And um, one of the things at his life celebration that he had asked um, to be sung is a song actually that, that is actually a Sufi chant. And, um, and somebody actually said this to uh, um, almost a, a song in a way that um, that really celebrates. Um, I think like the definition of like giving away the power and giving into the power of love. And so um, when we spread his ashes in the middle of this beautiful river, like this was one of the songs that, that he had asked to be sung. And so I wanted to share it with you because um, the, uh, the people who said this to music actually, you know, um, gave it uh, words in English and also in Arabic. So um, I can't sing to save my life, but I wanted to kind of share a little bit of like just the multicultural aspect of you know what we do here. Um, being a creative and speaking the language of, of, of art is a universal language, and you know um, take this wherever you go, and and share people with that, and share shared love with everyone. Okay, so um, it goes um, something like this. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. And then uh, we're going to sing that two times, OK? Uh, you want to try that with me real quick? OK. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. And then the next one, this is in Arabic. And so basically, uh, this in Arabic means God is love, lover, and beloved. Okay? This is just inner faith. We're just embracing the idea of love together. And so it, and I'm going to say it first before I sing it. It goes, Ish Allah, Mabu Allah. Say that with me. Ish Allah, Mabu Allah. We're going to do that four times, okay? Ishkala mabudala, Ishkala mabudala, Ishkala mabudala, 
Shkala Mahudala. Okay, we're going to do this all together, <coughs> starting from the top. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. Okay, if you feel compelled, all the people who are sitting, can you actually gather uh, and stand up with everybody that is... Actually, everybody. Let's just stand up. Let's just stand up together. Let's just stand up together and try to form a, a, a circle or, or a couple of circles and whatnot. And then if you're so moved and if you don't mind uh, with me, uh, hold the hand of the person if you're not scared. Are you okay with holding hands? Yeah. As a matter of fact, hands are planning because I'm sitting on me and you're like super cringy. Oh no, just I'm sitting on me. They're moist. Yeah. How are you doing? There we go. We got two elbows. We don't have to. How are you doing? Just hold the hand. We're holding it. We're holding it with our elbows. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you, loving you. Ishkala mabudala, ishkala mabudala. to wave our hands in the air. <laughs> All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. All I ask of you is forever to remember me as loving you. so grateful for your partnership and being in this community with us and thank you for helping to build this sanctuary together. 